Do you have some 6x8 paper pads that need some time to shine? Or are you looking for ideas for 5x7 cards? Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm going to help you make the most of your crafty time and supplies. So let's get making. Today is a no scrap template for 5x7 cards from 6x8 paper. It's kind of like a one sheet wonder in terms of you're using the whole sheet of paper and making some cards. You're going to make two 5x7 cards from one sheet of 6x8 paper today. It is a very, very simple sketch, but I know that there's not a lot of ideas for 5x7 out there, so hopefully you will still enjoy this one. To get started, I have picked some paper from scrapbook.com. This is a 6x8 paper pad that is double-sided and it has quite a few patterns to choose from. It has no cut-aparts and it has more sheets than some of the other 6x8 pattern paper packs I've seen out there. So if that's more your style, you might be worth checking those out. This particular pattern paper has very similar designs on each side. So this side is a smaller scale design and this side is a larger scale design. This works great because of course they're going to perfectly coordinate and if you prefer a certain scale of design to the other then you'll have options there because sometimes when you're working with cards you need that smaller scale. Okay, I'm going to start with my 6x6 six six piece of paper. I'm going to cut it to 3 inches by 8 inches. So I'm cutting it in half on the 6 inch side. Then I'm cutting it to 5 inches long and then the other piece will be 3 inches long. So I'll take it on the 8 inch side. Then I will line it up to the 5 inch mark, make my cut. That's it. I'm going to need some cardstock mats or my sketch calls for some cardstock mats. You don't need them. I'm going to make my mats a quarter inch bigger. So instead of being three by five, it's going to be three and a quarter by five and a quarter. So I'm going to cut one piece of cardstock to three and a quarter and then by that 11 and a half just so that I have a lot of chunks to work with. I'm going to need a five and a quarter and a three and a quarter for a single card. Now, because I make a lot of cards with 6x6 six six and 6x8 six paper, 3 and a quarter becomes a super common size for me. So knowing this scrap is 3 and a quarter is actually kind of encouraging for me and not a frustrating cardstock scrap there. But we actually are going to use some of the scraps that we create. Now, I have all of the paper and cardstock for both cards. But I'm only going to focus on making one, just so that we keep a reasonable video length for you today. I know ahead of time, thought about what I wanted to do with this card. I want a sentiment to be my focal part of this card. I want that to be what draws your attention, rather than an image. A lot of times I also like to work with an image as a focal point. But if you like to make 5 by 7 cards, I wanted to show you a die that oops, outside the bag is perfect for that scale of card. So here I have a five by seven card and this hugs sentiment from Pink and Main is really substantial and in fact would be kind of a tight fit on an A2. So worth checking out if you really love five by seven. Okay, I want to cut this hugs scripty word out of the same card stock as my mats. So since this inside is going to be covered up, I'm actually going to cut my hugs out of here to save some cardstock. This particular piece of cardstock is actually like a singleton in my collection. I just have this one single piece of this orange, so I really got to make the most of it. And I actually don't even know if I could squeeze it out of the scrap. So this is pretty perfect that it worked out this way. And you can always do that, cut a shape out of the center. And then... I am going to cut the shadow part of the die out of some yellow cardstock. Now I have extra pieces of this and I'm always going to start with a scrap, of course, so that I'm making the best use of my cardstock as possible. This happens to be a Simon Says Stamp cardstock. However, most of the cardstock in my collection is actually from Michael's Recollections, 110 pound, or Park Lane from Joann's which I also believe is 100 or 110 pound. 
and they have a lot of great color selections there. One disadvantage to consider with purchasing cardstock from the big box stores though is that they only ever come in packs. So you have to get like a multi-rainbow pack in Park Lane and then at Michael's they have like packs of blue or primary colors or a variety of things like that and sometimes I've used all of one particular shade of red from a pack and nothing else and I don't know that I want to buy a whole other pack. Whereas if you get cardstock from a lot of the great companies out there like MFT, Simon Says Stamp, Gina K, and Gina K has excellent prices on her cardstock. It's some of the cheapest I have seen um, out of the outside of the big box stores, and it's very nice quality. Then you can order just the color you want. I also heard Paper Tray Ink is a great one in terms of price. Don't think I've had an opportunity to shop with them yet, just because my cardstock stash is quite large at the moment. Um, that's the other problem with buying those big packs, is you get like a hundred pieces of cardstock at a time, and you gotta use those all up. Okay, glued down the hug sentiment onto my shadow with the Barely Art glue. And I love my Barely Art glue, never having any warping issues, dries clear. I love my glue lounger because it keeps the glue at the tip so that I don't ever get air bubbles and that my glue is always ready to go. And I forgot that my ATG is empty. Turns out my ATG wasn't empty. It actually broke. That happens sometimes. Um, sorry, not the whole ATG. My ATG tape broke. And what I mean by that, and I'm just going to share this quickly, there is a whole video on my channel about the ATG, but like the tape broke here. And I was able to just re-thread it, and it wasn't a problem, but some people are like, it, there, if you have tape that breaks regularly, this has never happened to me before with my tape from Tape Jungle. This is the first time in all the years that I have been purchasing from the Tape Jungle that one of their rolls of tape broke on me. Uh, but if it happens, you can usually just keep, just, you know, re-thread the uh, device and it's fine, but if you have any trouble threading, I have an ATG trips, ticks, trips, boo, tips and tricks video for you. Okay, I glued down one on the smaller printed side and one on the larger printed side just for some interest. Now I'm ready to put it on my card. I could put this on my 5x7 card as so, but there's quite a bit of white space. And that's fine for me, I don't mind a bunch of white space, I like the look of a clean and simple card, but to add some visual interest, I actually embossed a 5x7 card. There are embossing folders from Spellbinders that are six by nine inches, which means that you can boss the entire front of a five by seven card, a slimline card, an A2, a mini slimline, etc., etc. One little caveat. I have a Gemini Junior, and a Gemini Junior will not fit the plate fit the embossing folder anyway, but straight in. Like I can't turn it on its side. And so it's a little bit tricky and I'll show you the little like issue that I have. And it's nobody's fault. Like it's just that is the size of my die cut machine. And if I want to be using bigger things and maybe if you're a five by seven card maker, you have a bigger machine for this reason. But I had to put the card in the embossing folder and it was hanging out the edge here. I'll show you. And if I want the design to go all the way to the folded edge, I even have to really stick it in a bit more. And in order to get this into my Gemini Junior machine, which only has a plate surface this big, this isn't the cutting plate, but just showing you the one that I had closest to me, I had to fold the cardstock over and then run it through my machine. Make sure you find out what the embossing folder directions for your machine is. And that means on the back, it's not pretty and perfect because there's a little extra fold in there and there's some lines from the cutting plate. So what I would suggest doing is if you don't want that, and that's totally understandable, is you just cut another piece of five by seven paper, emboss it, 
and then glue it on top of your card base. It'll give your card a little extra thickness. You could choose an extra color so that you don't have a white card base. Or you can do that if you don't mind. But I just wanted to point that out because while the embossing folders are great for 5x7 and slimline, they may not fit in your embossing machine depending on its size. Okay, so when I first looked at this card, I thought, oh, I should, you know, I should totally be using my liquid glue right here. Um, I should be pulling out the pink. That's what stood out to me at first. But I challenged myself, like, what actually is that card stock in your stash that doesn't get enough love? And that is sometimes orange and yellow for me. So that is what inspired my sentiment and card stock choices today. I think this could be great with a floral embellishment or a cute critter or whatever you wanted to keep going with this card. And I think that that embossing in the background adds a great touch. Spellbinders has many of them now to choose from. And if you found this video inspiring, here's another video where you can find more ideas for enjoying your crafty time and supplies. Let me know you like this video with a share to your crafty community. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next template or tutorial. And check the video description for product links. See you in the next video.